It's deja vu all over again. Seven years of delays since the initial schedule launch of Starliner in 2017. And now, just in May 2024 alone, Boeing Starliner has been postponed for the fifth time. How much longer do we got to wait? Why can't Starliner make its first flight like Dragon did? Besides Boeing, does NASA bear some responsibility for this delay? Let's get into it in today's episode of Alpha Tech. In a statement released on the evening of May 21st, NASA announced that along with Boeing and United Launch Alliance, they will not proceed with the planned spacecraft launch May 25th for the Crew Flight Test CFT mission, which includes two NASA astronauts. On May 22nd, NASA continued to update the target launch date for Boeing spacecraft to June 1st. The team has been in meetings for two consecutive days, assessing flight rationale, system performance, and redundancy, the agency stated. NASA will share more details once we have a clearer path forward, the statement concluded. This is the fifth postponement since the originally scheduled departure date of May 6th. Indeed, we are increasingly losing faith in Starliner's launch schedule, as they always announce delays just when we're about to celebrate. Although delays are not new to this program, the first flight of Starliner has long been awaited, which makes each postponed schedule all the more disappointing. It's truly shameful for a giant in the aviation industry and the world's leading aviation organization. So why? Why is it that Starliner, created by leading experts, cannot match the Dragon by SpaceX, a younger private company? SpaceX saw Dragon as an important capability for the company going forward and put all their efforts into it. To SpaceX, it was a golden opportunity to show the industry that they were a serious company and could do great things. SpaceX did not mind putting in extra effort into Dragon as they saw it as a showcase product for their company. Dragon's a matter of pride to SpaceX. Meanwhile, Boeing saw Starliner as just another government contract and wanted to put as little effort into it as possible while getting the most profit out of it. Boeing was used to cost-plus contracts, which reward a company for being behind schedule and over budget. Basically, the government pays for all the costs, no matter how late or over budget it becomes. However, the Starliner contract was a fixed-fee contract, which means that Boeing could only get paid if they produced their product. If it was late, payment would get delayed. If there's a budget issue, Boeing would have to cover it. Boeing wasn't prepared for this. They thought they could just rely on their expertise to make a winning product, but were not willing to put forth the extra effort required. Boeing ended up putting so little into Starliner that it had a hard time meeting specifications and passing inspections. It is a dangerous spacecraft that's not built to be the best spacecraft made, but instead just enough to pass muster. But is Boeing the one to bear responsibility in all this? Honestly, it's not just Boeing's fault. NASA also bears some responsibility for the delays and difficulties in developing Starliner. NASA officials admit that they did not provide as much oversight for Starliner as they did for SpaceX's Dragon because the agency was familiar with Boeing. This seems to be an excessive complacency on NASA's part. It was this very complacency that led to a tragic scar in NASA's history. In its early days, NASA suffered its first major disaster in 1967 with the loss of the Apollo 1 crew, Gus Grissom, Roger Chaffee, and Ed White. The trio perished not in space, but during a test at Cape Canaveral when their oxygen-filled capsule caught fire and there was no way to open the hatch from the inside. Although an investigation revealed shocking incompetence, it didn't derail the Apollo program. Even though there is great jubilation as 12 Americans walked on the moon's surface in a series of bold missions, space flights remained extremely dangerous in a hostile environment, even up to the last Apollo mission in 1972. However, these dangers seemed to have be forgotten by the time the space shuttle was introduced, at least forgotten by NASA's leadership, who, intoxicated by Apollo's success, frantically promoted their new winged vehicle as a revolutionary design that would fly frequently and even allow ordinary citizens to travel to space. The hype from NASA's publicity machine did not match the reality of the serious mechanical issues engineers struggled with after each shuttle flight. Overconfidence and recklessness led NASA to rush a launch, despite engineers' warning about the cold weather's impact on the Challenger's solid rocket booster O-rings. The problems were not limited to faulty O-rings. Another factor was NASA's culture, where leaders were eager to achieve the flight rate they promised the public while managing a program plagued by significant cost overruns and delays. Instead of pausing, the agency pushed ahead. Engineers at Morton Thiokol, the NASA contractor responsible for solid rocket boosters, expressed concerns about the O-ring seals. One NASA leader barked at them, My God, when do you expect me to launch? Next April? Adam Higginbotham, 
a British journalist who wrote a book about the Challenger story, delivered a strong and compelling verdict on NASA in his book, stating, An organization that had, since its inception, boasted of its ability to manage extraordinary risk on the frontiers of technology and learn from its mistakes, had instead overlooked a litany of clear warnings. The signals lost in the noise of a complacent can-do culture bred by repeatedly achieving the apparently impossible, seduced by their own mythos and blind to the subtleties of engineering complexity that none of them fully understood, the nation's smartest minds had unwittingly sent seven men and women to their deaths. One might hope that today NASA had learned its lesson from Challenger and that we will launch when we are ready is an unrealistic doctrine. However, the dangers remain. Although NASA no longer launches astronauts on its own as it once did, it now relies on contractors, SpaceX and Boeing. While SpaceX has successfully completed all its crewed missions, Boeing's faced numerous technical issues with the Starliner. Recently, Boeing has encountered several problems, the most apparent being the safety of their spacecraft. Astronaut Butch Wilmore has denied that Starliner issues reflect these broader troubles. However, some of Boeing's other space operations, apart from Starliner, have also experienced mechanical failures and budget pressures, including the Space Launch System, SLS. The SLS is planned to be the primary rocket for NASA's Artemis program, which aims to return humans to the moon for the first time since the Apollo era. Given all these issues, it's hoped that NASA will more closely oversee the engineering projects related to all missions, impartially and without overlooking any safety concerns. Let's see how NASA demonstrates this commitment by reviewing the recent issues with Starliner. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and share and subscribe so our team will be motivated to give you more daily content. All right, back to the delayed Starliner flight. We need to keep a few things in mind when Starliner docks with the ISS. Not every spacecraft can reach the ISS at any time. They gotta follow a sequence and a plan. If NASA and Boeing address their concerns about the helium leak without requiring extended repairs, the International Space Station can accommodate Starliner's docking throughout July. After July, that schedule becomes chaotic. The ISS will have numerous crew and cargo vehicles visiting in August, including the arrival of a new astronaut crew on SpaceX's Dragon and the departure of a crew on another Dragon. There might be a window for Starliner to dock at the ISS in late August or early September before the launch of SpaceX's next cargo mission, which will occupy the port Starliner needs to use. The docking port will be available again in the fall. ULA also has other high-priority missions they want to launch from the same pad needed for the Starliner test flight. Later this summer, ULA plans to launch the final mission for the U.S. Space Force using the Atlas V rocket. After that, ULA aims to launch the second demonstration flight of its new Vulcan Centaur rocket, which replaces the Atlas V shortly after September. And that'll do it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and hope to see you next time. Bye.